Paris, March 2011. Protesters are attacked by members of Scientology. We've just been attacked by Scientologists, so that's what they understand by freedom of expression. Look at me. That was a man who took his two daughters to a cult that kills people. You see? The cult Scientology fights critics, authorities and the media with an intelligence service. The Office of Special Affairs, OZA. I would submit that the Scientology OSA organization is one of the longest running intelligence organizations in the world. They've been consecutively operating for over 50 years. We wonder why does a religious community need an intelligence service? What are its tasks? We conducted research for over a year. The Scientologists claim the OSA is their press and legal department, but in reality, the task is to enforce a world of Scientology. village close to Berlin in Germany. The former cult commissioner of the Protestant Church in Germany, Thomas Gandau, here on the left, is visited regularly by Jerry Armstrong, an ex-Scientology member. In the 1970s, Jerry Armstrong was a close colleague of the cult's founder, L. Ron Hubbard. The Scientology leader was even his best man. Since leaving the cult at the beginning of the 80s, Jerry Armstrong has been active as an advisor on problems relating to Scientology. The intelligence service has been trailing him for 30 years. Observers have also turned up in Buchautal in Germany since his arrival. One day in spring 2003, Gando and Armstrong want to take part in a church service in Berlin, Germany's capital. His pursuers suddenly turn up. And then we saw him like he was taking photos. They thought, guy's got a gun. You know, so it was, it was terrifying. The chase raises a great deal of media interest. The perpetrator, a property valuer from Berlin, is later fined for infringement of traffic regulations. Scientology admits that one of its members is responsible. I have never experienced at any other sect what I experienced at Scientology, that they, that I've been attacked physically too. Armstrong has been collecting reports about such incidents. For him, the car chase is not an isolated incident. I believe that there's nothing that they would not do for Scientology. So they will commit any crime, as we know, for Scientology. And as the pressure mounts against Scientology and against the leader, whoever that is, then the possibility of a real catastrophe, assassinations, is, becomes realer and realer. Even assassinations? And a village in Germany as a target of Scientology? Scientology is a global organization. There are branches almost everywhere. On the internet, the organization presents itself as a complex structure of numerous associations and firms. The American L. Ron Hubbard, a science fiction author, founded the cult in 1954. Its goal is the so-called liberation of planet Earth and to build a new civilization without mental illness. Hubbard claims that Scientology possesses the only technology which can secure man's survival. The psychological technique called auditing. 
a sort of lie detector test that takes subjects back into past lives. Critics describe this method as traditional brainwashing. Ron Hubbard served in the US Navy intelligence during World War II and later lived on a ship for a long time. Overstepping the law was necessary, he wrote, to achieve the aims of Scientology. Lies, stealing, corruption were allowed as a means to save mankind, he said. To this end, in the 1960s, Hubbard set up his own intelligence service. At first, he called it the Guardian's Office. Soon, more than a thousand agents and informers were working for the service. Hubbard set objectives for them, for example, how to eliminate enemies and gain control of the media and politicians. And deal with the things that worry them. The rest is religious ramblings and stories about his achievements in this life and the ones he's led before. This is David Miscavige, Hubbard's successor. He's ruled over the Scientologists for 30 years and implements Hubbard's directives. Hollywood stars like John Travolta help him with this task. Scientology can count on the support of other celebrities too, like Kirstie Alley or Tom Cruise, here with Miscavige. In a book by former Scientologist Mark Headley, we read breathtaking accounts from the Colts' main headquarters. Headley also describes how the Scientology Intelligence Service harassed him after his departure in 2005. We travel to Washington, D.C. to meet him. Mark Headley used to produce Scientology propaganda films. Today, he's a successful businessman in the multimedia sector. Most of the people that work for OSA, that work in the Scientology OSA unit, are people who have been in Scientology for 20, 30, 40 years. And they are 100% dedicated to Scientology 24-7, 365 days a year. That's all they do. They, the people that work directly in the OSA unit, they are convinced that the future of all mankind's eternity depends on what they do. If they don't do what they are told by David Miscavige, then the future eternity of mankind could be sacrificed. Washington. In the 1970s, the cult's founder and Scientology came into conflict with the U.S. authorities. Back then, the cult's intelligence service was responsible for one of the biggest internal espionage scandals in U.S. history, known as Operation Snow White. Scientology agents infiltrated the authorities and ministries. They stole thousands of files and put wiretaps on politicians, thus gaining access to secret information about the government's measures against the cult. It was a dark moment in the USA's history. The FBI uncovered the affair in 1977. Eleven leading Scientologists were sentenced to prison. Scientology was thrown into a deep crisis. There was also pressure from the tax authorities at the time to pay hundreds of millions in owed taxes. Scientology went on the counter-attack sued thousands of employees and almost paralyzed the tax authorities. In 1993, the tax authorities capitulated. Scientology was recognized as a charitable organization and received full tax exemption. From then, the cult was socially acceptable worldwide. Why a uh, United States tax authority, why they are the ones who say who and who isn't a religion, that doesn't make that much sense, but the way the Scientologists saw it, they saw it as a major way to be able to get themselves recognized as a religion in other countries. The victory over the tax authority was down to the OZA. We learn about the massive personnel and financial resources invested. The director at the time was Mike Rinder. We look at old recordings of Mike Rinder. He's a child of Scientologists rose through the ranks under Miscavige 
and has been the man in charge of Oza since the 1980s. He made many enemies during this time. We read on the internet that Rinder left the organization in 2007, but he still shares the ideology. He's now the spokesman of a group called Independent Scientologists. We want to get in contact with him through high-ranking former cult members. We travel to Florida, where the former director of the intelligence service is believed to be. An American colleague picks us up. He was put in contact with Rinder via a middleman. Mike Rinder has laid down some conditions, however. Critical questions about the cult's founder, Hubbard, are taboo. Uh, or if there's an issue with who gets what first, then, you know, he goes across and we'll do something. In typical Secret Service style, the meeting takes place in a hotel near the town, Tampa, St. Petersburg. Mike Rinder is on guard. He's fallen out with the sect leader, Miscavige. The former hunter has become the hunted. The police are on the way. The police, I don't care, you don't understand anything, dude. You're a retard. You have difficulty understanding things. Mike Rinder is obviously being fought with his own methods. OSA, at the time of Rinder, did a great deal to ensure the major tax exemption victory. Leave the premises. 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 Miscavige knows full well that, at least in the United States, you are pretty shielded from law enforcement even, from civil litigants, from any sort of outside intrusion into the affairs of the church because courts in the United States cannot make decisions with respect to the free exercise of religion. That IRS exemption gained uh, a huge shield that could be used to prevent any outside overview and outside influence on the church. The non-profit nature of the organization also protects the Office of Special Affairs. Its three most important departments are investigations, public affairs, legal section. We fly back to Europe and want to look at one of the first major OSA operations in Germany. Our destination is Remagen on the Rhine. This is where lawyer Ingo Heinemann lives. He already took legal action against Scientology at the beginning of the 1970s. His clients felt they'd been conned by Scientology. They'd paid extremely expensive fees for courses that would allegedly free the mind. Heinemann consequently became a target. Today he runs one of the most comprehensive internet sites on the cult. I consider them dangerous in every way. For the consumer, yes, consumers are seriously ill-treated. Those who join, not just in terms of money, but in their style and standard of living too. But they are dangerous to the public too. After all, that is why the Office for the Protection of the Constitution is investigating them. Would you say that Scientology is anti-constitutional? Yes. There is no question, Scientology is anti-constitutional. 
an organization that constantly violates penal law can certainly be anti-constitutional. I think that is the case with Scientology. Yes, and then there are also the human and fundamental rights aspects, and there I take the same view. Can that be proved? Heinemann was spied on and tailed by this man, Norman Suchanek. The trained bookkeeper went to Scientology because he hoped to be more successful in his personal and professional life by attending the personality courses. Suchanek is talking to us because he now regrets his actions as an OSA agent. OSA was looking for personnel because they wanted to get tougher with their opponents, and so I was recruited. And I didn't know what the target person had done exactly. They just said, that is a bad guy. We have to do something about him. That is an enemy. That is the opponent, and we need someone to spy on him. Suchanek stole and looked through the rubbish of the target person. At the beginning of the 1990s, Suchanek and a colleague went to Ingo Heinemann's house and stole the rubbish. Again and again, for months. He brought back the bin afterwards. The stolen documents he sent to a rented P.O. box in Hamburg. Suchanek used secret OSA guidelines for this work. A so-called plan for investigations in Germany described what he had to do. What were you able to learn from Mr. Heinemann's rubbish? Yes, they, they asked about anything that was informative in some way. That included, of course, correspondence of any kind, medicines, whether alcohol was being consumed, everything was useful. Which newspapers he read. Suchanek had the OSA rules of Scientology founder Hubbard in his head, secret service methods similar to that of the CIA and KGB. There are instructions for all sorts of things. For example, instructions to teach you how to lie convincingly. But there were also instructions on how to stalk someone. There were rules on how to make sure you don't get caught, but still really badly harass the stalking victim, and many other things. There is the instruction that you should ruin people financially, if at all possible. Back then, during a raid, it emerged that Ingo Heinemann was being spied on by the Scientology Intelligence Service. The investigators found highly controversial documents. We have access to these. They include the so-called hat write-up, detailed directives for OSA agents. Nothing like this has ever been found in Germany before. Scientology gathers all sorts of information about members and about external enemies. All information is sent from the local OSA offices to Los Angeles. This creates an enormous archive for Miscavige and his intelligence service. We have managed to get hold of one of these files on former Scientologist Mark Headley, investigative files and wiretap protocols. Telephone conversations were recorded, personal and business relationships. There's even a written report of every last detail of a birthday party. OSA also hires uh, hordes of lawyers and private investigators, and OSA also utilizes members of Scientology all over the world that operate as Scientology operatives, um, but they're just members of Scientology. The Bavarian state government in Munich is one of Scientology's targets. The OSA has its German headquarters in Munich, and the state government has been cracking down on the intelligence service since the 1980s. The intelligence unit, the OSA, is to Scientology something like what the Stasi was to the GDR. Its system of gathering information, but then using this information to systematically develop activities. So, for example, to use this information against the people when they want to leave. Then the people who are thinking of leaving are blackmailed with this information, with the threat of deliberately disclosing this information to the public. 
The German Office for the Protection of the Constitution believes the OSA deploys huge human and financial resources to acquire information. The money for this comes from the so-called war chest, to which not just wealthy Scientologists donate large sums of money. Insiders suppose that there is about a billion dollars in the war chest at the moment. The reason that Scientology and their OSA unit are able to get away with what they get away with is because of the money. Uh, in the end, I think anything and everything that occurs um, that might be looked uh, as illegal, looked at as illegal, or um, infiltration, any of these certain things that OSA does, the spying, the private investigators, it's all kept in motion and kept alive by money. Um, the, the amount of money spent, when I was there in the 2000s, the amount of money that was being spent on OSA weekly was $100,000. That was just the, that's how much they got a week. To summarize, high-ranking ex-Scientologists confirm the existence of an internal cult secret service called the OSA, which spies on and harasses critics and ex-members. They say the OSA has almost unlimited funds. Hamburg, Germany. We want to find out why the German Office for the Protection of the Constitution is interested in the OSA. Scientology has said very clearly and has never distanced itself from this that it wants to form a new civilization and that this new civilization should be Scientology. And they have also said very clearly and haven't distanced themselves from this either that there can only be true democracy with Scientologists and indeed this is a totalitarian psychological cult with clear political ambitions. We also learn that the Office for the Protection of the Constitution recently exposed an OSA agent in Hamburg. There are some professionals among them. You notice that when OSA agents from the USA come here. They follow their target from the USA to Hamburg. And in the plane they sit in the row behind, perhaps even listening in on what they are saying. Here they hand over to German Scientologists who act as observers. Observations in Germany? Even today? In the summer of 2011 we actually witness one such surveillance operation. At Hamburg airport. Ursula Kabata, who's still an active critic of the psychological cult, is waiting for a high-ranking ex-Scientology member. We notice people obviously trying to take photos inconspicuously. Another man is watching. We notice at least six people documenting the arrival and transferring the information by mobile phone. Ursula Capita welcomes the guest Marty Rathbun from the USA, who used to be the number two at Scientology after David Miscavige. We spot more observers. Top ex-members like Rathbun are oppressors, according to Hubbard. That means arch enemies of the cult. Oza hunts dozens of these oppressors worldwide with its detectives to silence them. We decide to talk to one of the people taking photos of Rathburn and who is particularly conspicuous. Hello. Hello. Guten Tag, wir sind von Arte. Wo ist Sie auch mal? Sind Sie von Arte? Wollen Sie auch Martin Rathburn begrüßen? Wen wollten wir was? Martin Rathburn begrüßen. Wer ist das? Na, den Sie eben so fotografiert haben. Ah. Und haben Sie was dagegen? Wie kennen Sie ihn? Nee. Warum fotografieren Sie den denn da? Weil ich viele Leute fotografiere, genauso wie ich sie jetzt fotografiere. Problem? The US Consulate General in Hamburg. Ursula Capita has been summoned here several times to justify her measures against Scientology. The authorities of the US government regularly step in with massive support for the cult. Ever since the German government categorized Scientology as a totalitarian organization, there has been substantial pressure from the USA, mostly from the State Department. At the consulate itself, events were held that promoted the Scientology organization Narconon. 
The U.S. American Consulate General sends out invitations, and they have a specific invitation list to business people, politicians, the police chief, MPs from all walks of life. If I, as an extremist organization, want to gain access to the decision makers in politics, industry, and the arts, then there is no better platform than an American consulate general. And that's exactly what they do, and that shows their influence. The consulate, however, does not confirm this and refuses to be interviewed on the subject. We asked ex-intelligence director Rinder for his opinion. How, how do you get it channeled down to the consul in Hamburg, the American consul in Hamburg? I don't know. You get the, the State Department to... Uh... To, you brief the State Department and you get them to instruct the, the local consuls. And who, who uh, gets the State Department to do this? The people that go see them. Ann Archer went, Kurt went, John Travolta went, a bunch of lobbyists went, lawyers went. They were all... I mean, I went to the State Department one time. I can't even remember what it was for, but it was to brief someone about what was going on with the discrimination against Scientologists in Germany. Hamburg. Scientologists are demonstrating in front of Ursula Kabater's office. OSA press spokesperson Jörg Stettler is among them. Events like these are one of the tasks of the PR department of OSA. Although we've been requesting an appointment at the OSA office in Germany for months, we couldn't get one. But now Jörg Stettler from the German section of OSA is suddenly approaching us. Und mein Antrag besteht, es kann sie aufnehmen, setzen wir uns zusammen. Ja, und sie wollen nicht. Und sie haben mir auch gesagt, sie sind nicht interessiert daran, Recherchen zu machen. Doch, aber erst nach einem Vorgespräch. Das ist der Punkt. Das haben wir jetzt schon sechsmal geführt. Am Telefon, per E-Mail. Nein, nein, das war immer, nein, ich will kein Vorgespräch. Das war das Gespräch, ja. Das ist der Punkt. Wir haben schon sechsmal telefoniert. Ich habe Ihnen schriftlich alles geschickt. Sie sind nicht bereit zu einem Kanzler. Stimmt nicht. Das stimmt nicht. Sie haben ungefähr 15... 15 Mails, die Sie nicht beantwortet haben, wo, Sie unsere, wo, wo ja, die Fragen von mir nicht beantwortet so, wurden. Es ist nicht so, dass Ihnen Fragen und es ist nicht so, dass Sie das Fernsehen dürfen. Das ist der zweite Nein, aber wir dürfen, dürfen doch hinterfragen, wir dürfen doch Ihre Fragen hinterfragen. Ja? Stettler's camera people film us. We ask why Scientology was observing Mark Headley almost around the clock. Das, das habe ich keine Ahnung, was da, was da Sache ist, woher Sie diese Informationen schauen. Sie, wir sind, ja in, wir sind ja in Kontakt. Stettler is a media expert and knows how to dodge journalists' questions. In point of fact, we've been asking for an interview with Scientology for months. We answered long lists with counter questions, but still didn't get an interview. They would rather come on a live program, they said. But Stettler does at least confirm by email a ruling in Germany in which parts of Hubbard's writings are judged not compatible with fundamental law. This way, we won't find out anything about international networks of Scientology. Scientology is also very active in France. It's the only country in Western Europe that has made a serious attempt to disband Scientology. We head for Paris. Again and again, Scientology manages to survive court cases in France. But in January 2012, the Parisian Court of Appeal confirms a sensational ruling. The cult is ordered to pay a fine of 600,000 euros for gang fraud. Yes, there was political intervention, considerable political intervention. Official intervention came from U.S. Secretary of State Madeleine Albright, who intervened directly with the Prime Minister to support the Scientologists. There are a considerable number of American politicians who defend Scientology. How is it possible that U.S. politicians defend Scientology so staunchly in France, too? How has Mike Rinder managed to do this? It was done through hiring the right people, the right 
people with just like everything in Washington has done. You can go and hire a former State Department executive who's now in private practice. You can go hire a, a lobbyist who knows ex Joe Blow. You can go hire this person. It, everything in Washington is done by lobbying and finding the people that know the people, that eat lunch with the people, that can talk to the people. We leave Paris. And head for Athens, Greece. We meet with Antonis Bosnakoudis, a Greek investigative journalist and secret service expert. In 1995, worried parents stormed the Scientology headquarters in Athens, fearing for their children who'd been recruited there. The public prosecutor took action and had the Scientology facilities searched. Bosnakoudis shows us documents that were found during the searches. They include plans for a Scientology project called Bulgravia to gain influence on the governments of the Balkan states, Bulgaria, Greece, Albania and Yugoslavia following the fall of communism in the 1990s. Well, the first search took place because certain things were happening which led people to believe that not all was well here. Scientology clearly aims to destroy families, exploit people and violate human rights. The records found show national security was also a concern. Τα στοιχεία όμως που βρέθηκαν έδειξαν ότι η υπόθεση είναι πολύ πιο μεγάλη και υπάρχουν και προβλήματα εθνικής ασφάλειας. For this reason, the public prosecutor's office ordered further searches to enable criminal proceedings against the cult. During the third raid in the Athens Scientology Center, Kefa, the search officers found hundreds of incriminating documents, many of them encrypted. Bosna Kudis shows us proof that OSA kept records on around 2,000 people from public life in Greece. OSA informants in secret service, military and the media are listed. It's the first time since the Snow White affair in the USA that so many secret OSA documents have come to light. The raids made it a matter of state. Once again, it could be traced back to US government agencies. There was one document which clearly showed that the American Secret Service, the CIA, had intervened. That was the beginning of 1995, to close down the department and the Greek police for monitoring sects. An OSA telex. The good news are that with the intervention of CIA, the Greek intelligence department for sect matters is closed down and the employees fired. Analysis of the dossier revealed that the OSA had its sights set on prominent figures, such as the Minister for Public Order in Greece, Stelios Papathemalis. Smear campaigns began. Papathemalis speaks of interference from abroad in Greek politics. <laughs> The relations between Scientology and the CIA are clear. The main decision-making center of the USA has a relationship to Scientology. I myself became a target of this organization. I cannot imagine that they could have anything on me, but I could see from the documents that I was a target. The Athens Public Prosecutor's Office considered the activities of the cult secret service to be a danger to the state. They were particularly worried about the connections between the OSA and American authorities. The cult was convicted in 1997. Their headquarters is situated in a rundown area in the center of Athens, right next to a drug dealing hotspot. There's no sign of the Scientology Anti-Narcotics Department, Narconon, 
Instead, two cult members try to prevent us from filming their display windows. You can talk to our representatives. You can talk about whatever you like when you meet with them. The Scientologists keep demanding that we stop filming. Uh, tell me, you're showing these books for the public, so where's the problem for me to film it? The problem is this, that you're filming it. There's no answer. Why not? As usual, we're asked to hand in the questions in writing first, and then they'll see. While we're in Athens, the old Scientology facilities are still banned there. The cult is simply active under another name. Some of the documents seized in Athens come from Russia. They deal with Scientology's activities there and contain indications of infiltration of the arms industry. We leave Athens and travel to Russia. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union, Scientology began booming in Russia. The Scientologists opened Hubbard colleges and Dianetic centers everywhere, including in the state arms companies, like in the Yak aircraft hangar, which in addition to civil aircraft, also builds military aircraft. An OSA Telex found in Greece reports, a very good supporter for Dianetics and the Hubbard technology was made with the boss of the Yak airplane factory, which has 200,000 workers, opening a Hubbard college and a Dianetics center. All over the country, employees, executives, and in particular managers, completed the auditing process, which questioned them on personal but also professional secrets. Scientology archives data like this and passes it on to the headquarters in Los Angeles. Moscow. High-ranking politicians here are dealing with Scientology. We're on the way to an interview at the State Duma, the Russian parliament. The Russian Secret Service and the government have been watching the activities of the OSA since the 1990s. We have major misgivings about these Dianetic colleges opening in state companies, especially in military complexes. Why there, of all places? Why do such organizations have to go there? Isn't the real reason to get to quite different, secret information? Information that is classed as military or state secrets. When people are trying to get information like that, it's illegal. Images from the Russian Secret Service, the FSB. Police and Secret Service storm a Scientology office. Just like in Athens, hundreds of OSA dossiers and files on people are seized. Information collections about authorities, large firms and public figures. The German Berliner Zeitung revealed in 1998 that the designated Russian Prime Minister Kirienko had previously completed courses at Scientology. Now he is head of the Atomic Energy Agency. The Russian authorities never cease to be shocked about how sensitive the information is. They talk of espionage. The records found show that Scientology managed to infiltrate areas concerned with security. They established Hubbard colleges in state weapons factories and in secret nuclear sites. But why does an institution that describes itself as a church need information on nuclear weapons facilities? Of course, it's obvious. If Scientology has branches in many countries and the headquarters is located in the USA, then it is clear that all the information is passed on to America. It would be no problem if this organization was acting in a normal legal field. But there is a holding behind every Scientology organization. The Russian intelligence service, FSB, 
categorizes OSA as a hostile foreign secret service. Our research shows that the authorities, both in Russia and Greece, get tough on Scientology and place bans on it again and again. But the cult remains active in both countries. Since we haven't received any response to our numerous inquiries from international Scientology spokesman Tommy Davis either, we decide to travel to Hollywood to look for him. In Hollywood, we go right to the Scientology headquarters. The headquarters is called Big Blue. It's said that about a thousand Scientologists work here. Tommy Davis must be somewhere. The streets look deserted. Cameras are everywhere, even in the trees. All the Scientologists are immediately instructed via pager not to have any contact with us. Journalists, after all, are also so-called oppressors to them. We decide to try anyway. Hello. Please, may, may we ask you a question? This is German, this is German television. I'm afraid not. And we want to know why you are all, why nobody wants to talk to us here. Oh, I see. Okay, got it. Um, Please, what, what is the reason for that? The Scientologists not talk to anybody. Please, German television. Why are you all hiding? There are security guards everywhere. They report us to the press office. Then a member of staff appears. She's apparently the only one allowed to talk to us. Okay. To here? Yeah. Yes, I'm, um, we, we have already asked uh, your uh, office of uh, public affairs uh, like Mr. Tommy Davis uh -huh. to, to give us an interview and okay. I hope very much that we will succeed in uh, having him on the camera. Okay, well, you know what, he'll get back to you as soon as he has a chance to, but you know what, if, you, if you're walking around and disturbing the parishioners, it's going to make it that much tougher. Oh, no, we, we of... don't want to, <laughs> to disturb the parishioners. In the, of course, we would not go into a Scientology church uh -huh. if there was one. But, right. uh, uh, what do you we... mean if there was one? We have these other churches right here. It doesn't exactly look like a church here to us. It's all much more reminiscent of a business enterprise. We continue. The International OSA headquarters is situated a few hundred meters further up Hollywood Boulevard in a former bank building. Maybe we'll find Tommy Davis here. Cameras everywhere. We barely see anyone. This is where Miscavige discreetly manages his network of informants, lobbyists, lawyers, agents and detectives with the help of about a hundred senior officials. The way Scientology, the Scientology organization, the way OSA runs it is they hire lawyers who then hire either another lawyer or a private investigation firm that then hires private investigators that come after ex-Scientologists or critics of Scientology. So there's many levels of, of organizations between you and OSA. So if you wanted to prove, well, this private investigator is working for a private investigation firm that's working for a lawyer, that's working for a lawyer, that's working for OSA. So they're very, they've been doing this for 50 years. We search for references to Tommy Davis on the internet. Scientology cuts itself off, so being the spokesperson is no easy task. Ex-Scientologists get hold of Tommy Davis's mobile number, but it's just the mailbox every time we call. We ask ex-Scientologists on the internet where he could be. The answers are unequivocal. Images of cult leaders Miscavige's residence in the Californian desert. In the middle is the so-called SP Hall, 
which ex-members describe as a re-education camp for top Scientologists who've fallen out of favor. Is Davis here? There were people, and myself included, the carpet in this place was indoor-outdoor carpet, had to roll up your pants and crawl around on your hands and knees on this carpet. Well, that sounds fairly innocuous, but what actually ends up happening is you graze and burn your knees and the palms of your hands, and then you end up with these bloody, burned knees and hands, and it's actually quite painful. But people were made to crawl around on their, on their hands and knees as punishment for not having admitted whatever it was that they were supposed to admit. Although there have been reports of human rights abuses for years, there has never been a police raid in these buildings. When the police make polite inquiries, they're told that everyone is there of their own free will and that there are no complaints. Again and again, we've asked ourselves why US politics tolerates all this. We sent three dozen interview requests on the subject of Scientology to mayors, Congress and Senate members and former ministers. No chance. We're now making a last attempt at a public question time at the Los Angeles City Parliament. The politician responsible for the borough where Scientology's big blue headquarters is located is here. Every US citizen is allowed to ask questions. David, the American in our team, fills out the form. A little later, the press spokesperson informs MP Eric Garcetti of our request. The reaction? We're asked in no uncertain terms to leave the room. Guy is coming to talk to you guys. It's a known fact in Los Angeles that local politicians shield Scientology. We come across other links to politicians. They go as far as the White House. It was during Bill Clinton's period in office that Scientology managed to attain tax exemption. Hillary Clinton promotes Scientology organizations such as Narconon again and again. Bill Clinton wrote guest articles in the Scientology magazine Freiheit on several occasions when he was president. How can this be explained? There's a lot of money in Hollywood, also for election campaigns. According to our research, this is one of the reasons why the various threads between Scientology, actors and politicians converge here. At galas like these, famous and wealthy Scientologists are often asked to donate something to the war chest. Most of them don't know what OSA is doing with their money, but some are starting to realize. Scientology stars like the jazz musician Chick Corea and the film actress Kirsty Yali were part of the childhood of this young man, Tiziano Lulli. Today, in the Italian-American community, Tiziano Lulli is a star. As the child of famous Scientologists, he was indoctrinated from a young age. He had no idea about the infringements, he says. Then, in 2010, he left the organization. The musician lives over the rooftops of Hollywood. The White Escalade, the Grey Cards. We accept his offer to interview him at his residence. He used to be treated like royalty, like all famous Scientology members. Today, since leaving the organization, he's tailed round the clock. It came out because I saw too many things that were a major departure for what I knew Scientology to be. And then. Uh, Within the church, I was still trying to fix it. You know, the overly asking for money, the overly lack of, you know, uh, compassion, and everybody was very much, and it was more like a Nazi kind of an environment there. And I always hated it, you know. And, you know and, and as you go along in Scientology, you try to justify it because there's this carrot of freedom that they always put in front of you. Tiziano Luli films the OSA detectives. He's already filmed and identified over 70 different snoopers. Mike and Mark. Ooh, we got a little camera. <laughs> well, see that this big guy was the same guy that was outside my house. Yeah? Yeah, with the little... 
Although he's now called an oppressor by Scientology, he won't allow himself to be intimidated by the OSA. He wants to tell the public about the dark side of the intelligence service. He turns the tables on the people watching him and starts watching them. So we go with him. They're always in the same spots. Right now it's pretty interesting because they might be in escape mode, in hiding mode. Some really are really shy, like they don't like, you know, they don't like when you get close to them. A guy has a bandana that closes up, just making sure that you don't get his face because I guess they'll lose their job if they're recognized, you know, like they can't be private anymore if you, you know, record them and put them on YouTube. Tiziano Luli quickly finds one. He's sitting in the car having a break. locking himself down. See what movies he watching. Hey, how are you? What are you doing down here? This secret service tactic is called a public investigation. The aim is to intimidate the victim. You have a problem me watching you now? You have no problem watching me, so why why should you have a problem with me watching you? You're getting money from a corrupted organization, man. How the hell do you sleep at night? You know, they're doing human trafficking, slavery, forced abortion, beatings, violence. All right, have a good day. What a great day you're going to have. In the meantime, Luli has secured his beautifully situated house with sophisticated alarm systems and surveillance cameras. Luli wants to continue. He doesn't want to be silenced by the OSA. But they, just sh they should know that the money they're getting is money they have extorted directly from brainwashed people. You know, they think they're saving the planet. While all they're doing, they're spending about $50,000 a day to follow me, Jason, Mike, Marty, around, you know? Enormous amounts for the Secret Service to persecute its critics. That's the dark side of the glistening facade. As long as they go along with it, the celebrities are very welcome guests, such as here at the Thetan meeting 2007. They are the pivotal link between the cult and politics. Thank you very much. It's a business based on mutual benefits, Mike Rinder says. There's always a quid pro quo for these things. There's always. So you want to have Tom Cruise be your buddy for your next election, blah, 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 and come to your next fundraiser. You want to have John Travolta. And none of this is stated, but it's how everything gets done in Washington. We make our way to our last station, the city Clearwater in Florida, the mecca of Scientologists. Here, Scientology and OSA have almost accomplished their goal, a world where only Scientology exists. Clearwater used to be a popular seaside resort in Florida. Today, the city is in the firm grip of Scientologists, inhabitants tell us. Thousands of Scientologists from all over the world come to flag that's what the headquarters is called, to cross the bridge to total mental freedom. They attend extremely expensive courses and are audited. Clearwater is the lifeblood of the cult's organization. Apparently, Scientology turns over up to $2 million here every week. The work is done by the poorly paid Scientology soldiers who shape the townscape. A guard wants to get rid of us and calls the police. Where you're blocking or not? Well, there's the end. Uh, there's a, there's a uh, see our crew bus. Then a little later, the police do actually stop us. Is your last name Willie Balls? No. My last name is Nordhausen. Yes. Where's it here? 
up there. Oh. After being thoroughly examined and promising not to enter any Scientology premises, we're allowed to drive on. We pass by one of the enormous residential complexes where Scientologists in uniforms live in barracks. Everything is secured like a high security prison wing. The citizens of Clearwater fended off the invasion of the Scientologists until the middle of the 1980s, but they were able to do little against the mighty financial clout of Scientology. Public life is determined largely by Scientology. Politics, the economy, justice, culture. If there is resistance, the OSA takes care of it. There's a perfect example in Clearwater there was a judge who was very, very against Scientology. And Scientology had a function. They had a, a, a dance at their facility. And they invited this judge. And the whole purpose of this entire thing was to have John Travolta dance with the judge's wife. Everything was supposed to lead up to John Travolta going over to the woman and saying, hey, can I have this dance? And so now that judge can now tell everyone that his wife got to dance with John Travolta. Uh, needless to say, that judge no longer was a threat to Scientology in Clearwater, in Florida. The municipality paid a high price. Since Scientology doesn't pay any taxes, the city is bankrupt. Businesses closed one after the other. Barely anyone wants to live in this Orwellian setting anymore. If we leave the car, we have security or OSA personnel on our heels and are filmed. We ask one employee about his boss, Scientology spokesperson Tommy Davis. We're a spy You can forward all your questions to Freedom Magazine. Are you a Scientologist? You can forward all your questions to Freedom Magazine. Are you a robot? You can follow, uh, forward all your questions to Freedom Magazine. In Clearwater, it becomes obvious that Scientology has almost unlimited means, tax-free, to do everything possible to ensure what cult founder L. Ron Hubbard termed the survival of Scientology. Also, and precisely, for the Secret Service. Scientology is a business. They're a multi-million dollar, maybe even a multi-billion dollar business. And in the end, Whoever has the most chips on the table is the one who has the advantage. And I think Scientology, I think they practice that to a T. That evening, we leave the mecca of the Scientologists. The lights in their offices are on way past midnight. They say, Osa never sleeps.